If you are wondering what accounting standards cover your holdings in Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, then this video is for you. Welcome to Accounting Zero to Hero. We are here to help you understand the fundamental accounting concepts through simplified technical discussions and practical applications of the accounting standards. All of this to help you go from zero to hero. Accounting for cryptocurrencies is not as simple as it might first appear. As no IFR standard currently exists, reference must be made to existing accounting standards. The good thing is that IFRS Interpretations Committee published an agenda decision in June 21, 2019 regarding the IFRS treatments of holdings of cryptocurrencies. The conclusions in that document is the basis of the discussions in this video. In the document, the committee noted that a range of crypto assets actually exist. For the purposes of this discussion, the committee considered only cryptocurrencies with all of the following characteristics. Number one, the cryptocurrency should be a digital or virtual currency recorded on a distributed ledger that uses cryptography for security. Number two, the cryptocurrency is not issued by a jurisdictional authority or other party. And lastly, it does not give rise to a contract between the holder and another party. To make the long story short, the committee concluded on two possible treatments on cryptocurrencies. When the cryptocurrency is held for sale in the ordinary course of business, IS2 on inventories apply. And if this standard is not applicable, all other cryptocurrencies are covered by IS38 on intangible assets. IS2 applies to inventories of intangible assets. Paragraph 6 of that standard defines inventories as assets that are held for sale in the ordinary course of business, in the process of production for such a sale, or in the form of materials or supplies to be consumed in the production process or in the rendering of services. The committee observed that an entity may hold cryptocurrencies for sale in the ordinary course of business. In that circumstance, a holding of cryptocurrency is inventory for the entity, and accordingly, IS2 applies to that holding. The committee also observed that an entity may act as a broker trader of cryptocurrencies. In that circumstance, the entity considers the requirement of IS2 for commodity broker traders, who measure their inventories at fair value less cost to sell. IS2 states that broker traders are those who buy or sell commodities for others or on their own account. The inventories referred to are principally acquired with the purpose of selling in the near future and generating a profit from fluctuations in price or broker trader's margin. Again, holdings of cryptocurrencies that are held for sale in the ordinary course of business are under IS2. And according to the conclusions in the document, all other holdings are accounted for using IS38 on intangible assets. The committee observed that a holding of cryptocurrency actually meets the definition of an intangible asset in IS38 on the grounds that it is capable of being separated from the holder and sold or transferred individually, and it does not give the holder a right to receive a fixed or determinable number of units of currency. Under IS38, the company will have an option to treat the cryptocurrency under the revaluation or cost model. As you may notice, the conclusions also recognize that all cryptocurrencies fall under the definition of intangible assets. However, intangible assets that are within the scope of another standard are not covered by IS38, as shown in the screen. This is the reason why cryptocurrencies that are held for sale in the ordinary course of business are covered by IS2 on inventories despite being actually an intangible asset. But how about cryptocurrencies as financial assets? The committee concluded that a holding of cryptocurrency is not a financial asset. This is because a cryptocurrency is not cash since they do not currently have the characteristics of cash, nor is it an equity instrument of another entity. A cryptocurrency does not give rise to a contractual right for the holder and it is not a contract that will or may be settled in the holder's own equity instruments. 
just some final thoughts on the topic before we close off. This is just a very quick overview of the interpretations issued on June 2019. And as of now, there are no new standards issued covering the topic. I suggest for you to read more on the topic if you're interested using all of the resources that you can actually find online. And that's it for now. I hope you learned something from this very quick discussion. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. See you!